I mean, you get some people, don't you? I only listen to this, and that's all. Listen, listen to rock from 1977, June to July. That's all I want to listen to, because after that, it was crap. There's never no... Oh, this is a good yeah. win for everyone. Oh, there's no music after the 70s. It's all crap, you absolute gunk. That's all I'll say. There's nothing now. It's all crap. Well, try and listen to something else, you... Uh, but... Thanks, Fidanis, for setting it up, and... Uh, Thanks for my storage for sponsoring some of the shows and this interview. I will just put their details on the screen for you so you can check that out. Uh, these are done for Dougie's Atomic Dustbin generally or for the station and appear on YouTube. If you watch on YouTube, come and join us. Come and find us. But check out MI Storage. Thanks for them for uh, sponsoring the show, show, as it were. Right, we'll bring our guest on. And he's been wait, pa waiting patiently while he's playing that music. How are you doing, man? Uh, brilliant, thank you. You all right, Kirk? <laughs> yeah, it's been... Yeah, I, there's no point in me telling you all the stuff that's been going on, but it's been a trying time, let's just say that. Yeah. yeah. So things are starting to slot into place now, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been a bit crazy, man. It's been a bit crazy. How about you? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. Yeah, just uh, a lot of, lot of prepping for the uh, next single and album and uh, uh, a few gigs coming up in December, but uh, a little bit quiet, just taking a bit of time out. Brilliant. Uh, but yeah, pretty good, thanks. Well, introduce yourself so everybody knows who you are. Yeah, so I'm Paul from Patchwork Dots. Um, we've been going since around 2019, 2020, um, independently, uh, trying to release a number of singles over the last couple of years, uh, building up to the debut album. Uh, mm. But we're from uh, Barnsley, uh, Barnsley. Rotherham, Sheff Sheffield area up in Yorkshire. Someone has to be, um, well, there you go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we've basically been playing local and down at Camden and uh, out and about uh, trying to gig solo, uh, as well as uh, getting together with a band that that uh, I started a couple of years ago in the in the studio. Um, but yeah, basically just trying to write his own stuff. Um, it's a lot of my songs uh, that I'm trying to push out there um, and, and record songs that are honest to, to myself and. Uh, yeah, just just push it out there as, as much as possible, and at least look back and say, "Well, I tried." <laughs> I'll turn my microphone on. Um, yeah, that I think that's at the end of the day. You've got to try them. You don't. I, I watch. I watch a lot of stuff, and I think um, I can't even remember who I'm quoting now. But he says something like, <coughs> "If you don't try, you're guaranteed to fail." Do you know what I mean? There's no. There's no. There's no winning because you've decided you're not going to have a go. But at least if you have a go at something uh, that you believe in, dream about, then there's a potential that it could come to something. And what's the worst that can happen? You enjoy the ride. And uh, if if that's that's the worst thing, you're enjoying what you're doing. It's not a bad thing, is it? Really? No, it's, it's great, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, I apologise if people can hear some hum in the background. It's me diesel heater running because it's getting a bit cold. I've just turned it off, but the fan still goes in it. Right, it's the right racket. So apologise for that. Apologise for that. So we've got. A, we're going to play it later. We're going to play it in a bit, and I'm, I'm, well, I might play it in a minute because we we did that last time. It seemed to work. So we've got a track that's not been released till the third of November, which is great. Thanks very much for that. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? What it's all about? It's called Wrong yeah, and Right. So wrong or Right. Yeah, Wrong or Right. The the track. It's it's out third of November. Um, it's about chasing a dream that you never wanted, but. Uh, there's a, a really good story um, close to, to my heart anyway, in terms of uh, we, we got the opportunity to go down to Rockfield Studios in Wales um, right. with, uh, with with the band, basically. We're long-term friends of mine. Um, so we got um, Frank on drums and Pete on double bass and piano um, and, and Sean or Macca uh, on acoustic guitars and backing vocals with me. Um, so I, I, I'm basically the main singer with uh, acoustic guitar as well. Um, and, and we got the chance to go down and travel down to Rockfield, Wales. Um, and we basically recorded this single in the same room as Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, and so we've got the, the piano that was on Bohemian Rhapsody oh. on this single. Um, and it absolutely amazing experience just, just to be in the same room and to the stop over oh, and stay man. over at the, that, the studio was was epic that sounds um, that sounds amazing 
Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, because I'm going to go and shut this bloody thing off. We won't be on screen. I'll mute you. We're going to play that track, and then we'll come back and have a bit more of a chat. How's that? And then it just breaks. That's great. breaks the short for people, doesn't it? And gives me a chance to turn that bloody thing off as well. So we won't be on screen. Um, we're going to listen to this track. What's it about? You Did, did you say what it was about, wrong or right? Or you didn't do did yeah, it? Yeah, it's chasing a dream that you never That's really it. wanted. That's it. I did... I did um, I remember you did say something. I knew I knew you did. You had said something. So right, we're gonna put this. We're gonna put a graphic on screen now for everyone, so they can watch that. We'll listen to this, and we'll be right back, people. Uh, let us know the answers on a postcard because we're gonna ask you questions about it. So let Let us know what you think about it. Be right back. Take a step back from all the things that you. Check. This life's been lost when it's won You can't find your peace of mind You can't find your peace of mind Daddy, old man, sitting in an outfit When you tell me what you see, where you're from I've not heard that. That's the first time I've heard it. Janice sent it me this afternoon, and I've not had time to say, does it play? And I went, I just played the start of it. That's brilliant. Love that. Love that, man. Thanks, Kurt. That's lovely. It really is. I, mean, I was trying to pick up then what it was reminding me of, because it reminds me of something, but that is a lovely track. Uh, Janice says, yeah, a lovely track. Uh, Eddie King's um, absolute nut when it comes to Queen. He went, oh, I already I already like this band already, because you mentioned Queen and the kids. Oh, that, that's how he speaks. Oh, yeah, there you go, all day long. <laughs> so, because on, on your, on your um, you said about being a solo artist and because you, the image on... You know, your socials is you on your own. And I wasn't sure if you was solo or you're back in... I wasn't quite sure. How, how the neither, whole neither am I, Kirk. <laughs> so, basically, it, it started off as myself, um, just just trying to write my own songs right. um, and, and trying to find my own sound, basically, uh, as most people do. Um, I, I am in cover bands and other things as well, you know, right. with, with friends. And um, so it, it started off with me just trying to write my songs and my sounds. Um, 
trying to do everything on my own basically and i was trying to record all everything on my own and that didn't work out basically. don't work don't work mate you can't <laughs> yeah. do it i've no, tried to no, do all no. this stuff on my own it doesn't work you need help yeah that's it so i i i, I bit the bullet and went into a studio um which was a, a massive help and, and and basically i was doing uh, sort of lyrics uh, vocals uh, I, I still do all i did all the guitars and the bass guitar um, and I brought in a session drummer um, for, for the first couple of recordings. Right. And it sort of grew from there, really, in terms of the first uh, few recordings. We sort of had the same uh, same drummer on board. Uh, we developed the songs in the studio. Uh, and then for this last single, Wrong or Right, uh, I got all my, my friends um, to come down with me to Wales. Um, and so, yeah, it's live at the minute. I'm still solo. So uh, we'll see what next year brings in terms of getting a band together. Um, but the the primary aim at the, at the beginning was just trying to write my songs. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds like you've got a drummer already. You just think he's a session drummer, but he's been on all your stuff. So you might as well take him on tour with you. Well, yeah, I've got two drummers, Kirk. So, oh, well, uh, like, yeah, oh got, awesome. I, I've hopefully got a choice, but we'll, we'll see what can next have a, year brings. Can have a drum off. I have two drummers on the stage. I have two drummers. That's it. That's it. I have them both drumming different things. It'd be epic, wouldn't it? Absolutely epic. <laughs> uh, Eddie said, there's a vintage... I can't even say... Oh, yeah, I see it's on the just above your left shoulder. There's a vintage tape to tape. He said, does it get used? Oh, it has. Yes, it has done. Yeah, it's a, a Tascam 38. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it did get used. I had to uh, I went through a period where I was starting to get a lot, a lot of broken equipment and started fixing guitars and old old uh, sort of reel to reels and amps and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, basically, I got that broken and, and fixed it up and uh, got it working and started. That's how, that's how my sort of studio at home grew basically I, with the the reel to reel um then it moved on to digital um and i realized i still can't do everything on my own <laughs> no you can't mate it's impossible we we entrepreneurs are the same and a lot of people like that that think you can do it on their own and you, you well you can to a certain point but you can't grow then can you because if you've got to, if you're recording then you're editing and then you're promoting then you're that, that there's only so many hours in a day you run out of time so you, you've got to sort of palm off the stuff you don't want to do type of thing or get other people involved who like doing that and then you can you can spend more time doing the stuff that that you're good at or your skill set's good at so yeah sounds like you're a bit of a control i bet you're a control freak aren't you as i'm picking the vibe up control no, freak. I, I don't think I'd, I'd go that far it's just not uh, a good passenger Definitely OCD, Kirk. Uh, yeah, there's there's certain things I've got to have in a, yeah. in a certain... I know, um, I'm, I'm getting the vibe I'm picking up. I bet you're not even a good passenger either. I bet you're a terrible passenger because you're not no, driving. No, I'm all right. Yeah, oh, yeah. you're all right. Especially when you've yeah, had a few. Yeah. No, I'm fine, yeah. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a good question. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, so Janet, Jan Janice says, tell us about your musical influences. It's a standard one, isn't it, really? Oh, it, it, it definitely start every time with the Beatles um Ooh. when I was very young it was um the 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 Decca tapes playing in the uh, in the car uh so through my dad right. um and uh yeah then moving on to sort of uh Clapton Jimi Hendrix Jimmy Page you know Led Zeppelin uh on to uh, Nirvana sort of Green Day yeah uh, Oasis um to Goo Goo Dolls and a, a lot of sort of Seattle bands. Um, so a lot of my other singles are sort of more, I would say, Seattle-based mm -hmm. um, bands. Um, and then there is that indie indie influence like your Oasis yeah. and uh, um, yeah, uh, and and maybe some Pixies as well in there. Mm. Yeah, so I get that because that 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 song that song we just played's got um, it's got a vibe with it, hasn't it? It's got a feeling with it. And I couldn't get me. Head, I couldn't. I couldn't locate it somewhere. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't say it's that. I know we shouldn't do that. Shouldn't pigeonhole people or music, but we do, don't we? Try. We try to make sense of the world by putting them in a little box. But I like the vibe, and that's probably what's coming through. Is that those influences and that Seattle type 
vibe in there, isn't it? And with it, yeah, it's good, cool, man. I love it, love it. Um, what... But it was, uh, it was, it was only at uh, Lele Records that gave me the uh, the tagline, which was lo-fi acoustic indie rock. <laughs> right, <laughs> it, 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 it is what I went with basically because I, I yeah, you, you do struggle, you know, to sort of yeah, what, what to call yourself and how to describe it, and uh, it was Ollie that came up with that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the, the the we we absolutely love them to bits. Lele Records are brilliant. If anyone wants to go and check them out, they're in Guernsey. They manage several bands, grunge bands, but they're also part of or they are coastal fire department and they are brilliant so definitely go and check them out uh but yeah all, they're, they're all they're all good aussie's funny drummer um yeah and they're, they're all good guys love them to bits love them to bits i, I was trying to look for something then because yeah they, I, I might have read that out on i might have actually read that out on one of the shows your profile probably did so because we we normally do the war on bios don't we so that's something that we normally do uh, yes. Know, have you uh, <laughs> have you been party to that? Have you been present? Have you understood it? Have you seen it? Yeah, I've I've, I've heard I've heard the uh, yeah the uh, the bits, but I I don't think you've uh, ripped mine apart yet. Kirk. Oh no, I'm just <laughs> fucking going in now, man. <laughs> I'm just going to see what I should have done that before. Sure, I? I, I like the graphic as well. The graphic of you sat down with the guitar it's quite good because you've made that a bit moody as well, haven't you? So yeah, um, yeah I've not done a war or bios for a bit. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go, people. I should record this and I'll put it out there. I'll put it out there. This, there you go. War on Bios. Now, War on Bios is not about having to go to bands or artists. War on Bios is about getting artists to think about it because some bands don't even bother putting a bio on. They have no social media links. And it's nice to see he's got Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Brilliant. And because if you want an artist to get the reach, well, if you don't let anyone help you, you know, find you. So this is Warren Bio. So is it a good bio or a bad bio? I don't know. Oh, so here we go. Oh, here we go. Fucking hell, straight away. So patchwork dots, it says, but it's fucking got loads of different fucking capitals and not that. That just fucks me right up as a dyslexic. Catch, patchwork dots are seemingly blended elements of rock and indie, resulting in a refreshing sonic palette that sets them apart from uh, contemporaries, RGM, uh, with a laid-back well-worn vocal style full of character and depth and uh, song leaving a lasting impact not to be thrown away in today's disposable society and in brackets accidental music uh uh reverie re 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 reverie reverie i think it says i'm fucking can't read that but anyway is that a good bio or bad bio i have no idea but at least he's got a book in bio at least he's got a bio brilliant love it there you go I mean, I, I, hopefully that wasn't too painful for you no, no, it's fine. <laughs> I didn't go any daft voices. Just my own daft voice. That was all I needed, wasn't it? Yeah, great, mate. It's good that you've got on there because it does make does make a big difference. You're you you're out there creating amazing music and your craft and time, and people sort of fail at the last hurdle and don't. It's, you have you have to be, you have to have the whole thing, don't you? Good graphics, good music, good. Lit. It's not good enough just to be. Oh, I've got amazing. You know, a lot of, I think a lot of bands go, we're fucking brilliant. That song's epic. We'll just be fake. Yeah, what happened? What happened? No one gives a rats, do they? Really? Yeah. No, I think that's the one thing I've learned, you know, over the last two years. Um, yeah, it's okay. You could write a song, but that's not the be all and end all, is it? it it's, no. it's everything that surrounds it. And uh, it is about promotion and it is about trying to get the music out there and, and having the right profile and that sort of thing. And, like you say, yeah, it's all judgment as to whether it's good or not, etc. But um, yeah, it's not. Ju it's never just about writing the song now. No. Um, no. But hopefully, for me, it's it is still about reflecting back on what what I have created and um, what I'm about to release. You know, so the all the singles we have got the ninth single is wrong or right, but uh, then we. I'm looking to release the debut album in December. Nice. Um, you know, and even if it doesn't go anywhere, I can look back and reflect and, you know, for myself, look back at it and be proud to say, well, at least I tried, like I said, and I, I, uh, I, I did that. I, I, you're right. And that's why, I mean, I started off years ago doing podcasts, and, uh, um, audio podcasts. 
and there's a number of reasons. I love interviewing people, love getting to get to know them. But also, I think same as what you're doing when you music, you're leaving a legacy, aren't you? And if you never tried it, you'd you'd regret it in years to come. But God forbid when we just when we depart here, our grandkids, great grandkids go, geez, was that my great granddad on there? And he did that and he did this and he did that. So I think it's worth doing. It's worth if if it's something people are passionate about, it's worth doing and seeing what happens with it. And it could come to nothing, uh, or it could lead to magical things. Who knows where it's gonna take you? So we never know, do we? And that's why we do this show, because we want we want people we want to give it make it um we want to make stuff accessible. Go away, discover bands that we think, well, Janice really. Janice thinks they're absolutely brilliant and we want to showcase them for people to discover. And it, it hopefully that just nudges people in the right direction. That's why we're doing it. Um, I think for me, it's uh, writing's always been the outlet. So yeah. it, it, if I'm writing, that, that means, you know, that's good for me. Hopefully other people like, the songs but if i can keep writing that's an amazing thing for me you know so, to just just to keep writing so i'm i'm going to put you on the spot here now so from the from the tracks that have been you've got on there that i can see i don't mind how how can i help you don't hang around magic show and time well spent if you wanted someone to fact you've got your new track release to to the to think about what portrays your music which one of those tracks would it be? Um, I think, as it stands today, I think "How Can I Help You" is probably one of the uh, roundest songs in terms of sound-wise. I mm -hmm. think that is the sort of rock sound. So we said earlier it was like lo-fi indie rock. Um, or acoustic indie rock, and I think uh, wrong or right is on the more on on the more of the acoustic side of things. Um, how can I help you? Is on is yeah. an example of, of the rock side of things. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, the, there was one on off, just off the list, uh, Kirk. That uh, it was the first single. It was called Fool, um, and I think that's another example of where I want to go after the debut album. Um, so more along the lines of Fool, How Can I Help You, and a, a little bit of Wrong or Right as well. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Well, we might not listen to all of it. We're going to play a bit of that track, and hopefully that'll tease people into checking out. We'll go off screen, and we'll have a listen to this. How's that? Yeah. Thanks, Kate. Cool. Listen to this, people. How Can I Help You, it's called. So that's a little snippet of How Can I Help from Patchwork Dots who we're talking to. So, yeah. I, yeah, I thought we'd, we'd slap that on there, give, her, give it a bit of a... Give it a bit of an airing. So we're back, up, we're back here. We're back in the room. Uh, so what have we got? A little bit Manta Ray sounding. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, liking the lot, liking this lots. What you should have said, Janice, was liking this dots. You know what I mean? See what I did there? <laughs> it's liking it dots. Where's the name come from, Patchwork Dots? Uh, well, to be honest, I was just looking for something that didn't exist. Um, to, Brilliant. To, to try to Brilliant. Identifiable on... Um, you know, when you search, basically, just, just trying to find something that didn't exist um, and try to try to create an, the, the imagery, uh, you know, around it as well. Um, I like that. So, yeah, it, given all the band names that are out there, I just wanted something that stood out and, and got people questioning what. Yeah, because <laughs> because that's what that, it frustrates me because we had a band on last week, last last week, Escapee. Yeah, and then when you type in Escapee on, say, Spotify, a list, and I was saying to Janice, which one is it? Which one? Are Who are they? Where are they? Do you know what I mean? And I was like, why have you picked that name? Oh, well, um, what? so it says their, their name's Escapee and Three Dots. I went, why is it Escapee and Three Dots? Because there's loads of other bands called Escapee, so I wanted to keep the name but put Three Dots, and I'm like, you, 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 you're insane. But that's up to them. They'll find out the hard way because people are lazy. You'll go on, type escaping, go, where were they? Oh, and three dots. Who the fuck going to remember three dots? And what they don't realise, when you do a hashtag, the three dots won't be there because dots aren't a lot of words. So, yeah, you, picking a name is the name Dougie Stone Radio, right? We we spent, me and my wife spent, when we was launching, a whole Saturday looking for names for a radio station. And every night time we picked a name, 
It was either a radio station or a company called it. And I was like, oh, my God. But I already had a business called Dougie Stone. I identified as Dougie Stone or Dougie whatever. And uh, I had a bank account and all the rest of it. And a business self. And I was like, mm. Dougie Stone Radio. So, and that's been a bit frustrating for people because then it's like, oh, people don't spell it right and all the rest of it. But now we've got a brand and no one else is called Dougie Stone Radio. So there you go. That's the way to do it. Um, should I... <laughs> Ed... <laughs> this is about the other band. He said they should have called themselves Three Dots. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Brilliant how his mind works. Now, now, what I what what a question that's really can, can be quite funny is when you've been on stage or you've been gigging or what disasters have happened because they're normally at the time very frustrating but end up turning out being quite hilarious. Um, yeah, I think solo over the last uh, last couple of years, I think it's it's been um, you know quite straightforward to be honest. But but that is probably because I spent many years gigging and playing right. with bands and stuff like that and in cover bands and 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 original bands and um yeah over the years uh there's been all sorts that's, that's gone off on stage especially with the bands um and uh yeah i mean some some of them are uh to the point where beer is being thrown around the room and uh, you're trying to dodge plastic cups and, and glasses or whatever, because <laughs> everybody's having such a good time. Yeah, and you end up uh, you end up sort of trying to dodge dodge all the alcohol flying around, and uh, you end up playing something that you've never played before, and it sounds absolutely brilliant in the middle of a song. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but, Ben, yeah, it, go on. No, I you know it, it's just uh, yeah, the, the, there's so many different memories of being playing. You know, for that long with bands on stages, when it's got to the solo acts, there's there's not been that much in terms of uh, mishaps, shall we say? Because I've, I've I've done you know so many gigs in the past. Right. I've got a question here, and I was thinking of something similar. He said, "If you could, if you cover a song, which one do you do live?" I'm not sure if he's saying if you could cover one, but you've covered them. I, I would turn that on his head and say, which cover song do you like doing the best? I'd say, I'd say something like that. So it's very similar. Well, I, I've, I've made a bit of a point solo-wise for Patchwork Dots not to do covers. Yeah, but when you did, so when you did I, your, uh, not, not you, but pre previous. Yeah. I think this is your previous cover stuff because you've mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. so the, with the covers band and things, we the uh, best song that we I enjoyed playing was probably... Uh, Seven Nation Army. Right. Okay. So we would play that as a band. I would sing that. Um, and yeah, just, just just the fact that it breaks down. So you've got the the, the sort of uh, raw bass guitar and, and sort of guitar, uh, you know, guitar coming in and out with the yeah. drums. It just, just, sounds, just sounds great. And everybody's always getting into that. Um, and other than that, it's probably any Oasis song because everybody knows. <laughs> well, wow, yeah, it's brilliant because... I'm not saying you are because you've you you are a good singer because we've we you've demonstrated that to us. But uh, if you pick something like that and if someone's fused, had a few beers, oh great! And everyone becomes Liam, don't they? No one wants to become <laughs> Noel. Everyone becomes Liam all of a sudden. I do because I'm from Manchester, so I, I, it's just in my DNA, and it? it's got to be done. And uh, they must help you along because they'll all be singing it. Everyone's having a great time. And they'll go, wow, that their band was brilliant, and they probably sung it all themselves, and probably couldn't even hear. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it's yeah, fucking marvelous, isn't it? It's absolutely brilliant. Who would you like to play with then? You would, you know, if he was like um, a list, and they said you said someone said right, magic one time, you're going to be on stage next week with who would it be? Uh, probably Dave Grohl. Oh yeah, okay, brilliant, cool. But your hero of yours, or is, it, is that what it is? is yeah, it? I, I think Nirvana to Foo Fighters. Yeah, uh, you know, throughout the you know the, the longest part of my life, anyway, in terms of uh, yes, it would be Oasis, and you've got your, your Liam and, and Noel Gallagher. But uh, yeah, I think it, it, Nirvana. Uh, sort of, I was into Nirvana uh, like a, at a very young age, but. Um, yeah, to play with somebody like Dave Grohl would be uh, would be epic. Mm. I don't. This is a. I don't even know why I was asking this question. 
Eddie, everyone just knows. Eddie's, Eddie's saying, uh, it's, it, that's interesting. How did you find Dougie Stone Radio? Probably been approached, man. Was it Lele Records? You know, I, can't, I can't remember now, Kirk. I, I must have been listening now for at least, uh, you know, must be over a year now. So, well, ever since I started releasing singles, so that was June last year. Right. Uh, um, you know, I can't remember. There you but go. I, Brilliant. I, I, Ever since then, I, yeah, basically, um, it might have been through um, Away Day, actually. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, on the Away Day thing. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. And, uh, yeah, I think I think that is right, yeah. And then Janice. And, uh, yeah, just, just finding um, different contacts through that. So it may have been through that. But, yeah, being listening since, uh, yeah, last June. Cool, cool. And before I forget, because uh, Eddie will go away and create a jingle, and I've got to get all my jingles back on. Can you, can you do, can you say something like, "Hello, this is Patchwork Docs Dots," and you're listening to Dougie Stone Radio? Yeah. Hi, this is Paul from Patchwork Dots, and you're listening to Dougie Stone Radio. Perfect, Eddie. Do your stuff, man. He'll go away and do something with that, no doubt. And it ends up on the show. Uh, my comp- like I said to you at the start, my computers. So I've not got any jingles. I've got to re-download everything. It's been an absolute nightmare. But I'm pretty pretty comfortable that we're we're, ro- we're rocking now. Rocking. So what's planned for for coming? What gigs have you got coming up? Um. So um, I've got uh, hoping for the debut album to come out in in December on CD only. And I've got um, they'll be hopefully selling them at the gigs. Um, on the 5th of December, I'll be at Sydney and Matilda in Sheffield. Yeah. And then the 6th of December, I'll be at the White Bear in Barnsley. Um, and then we're looking, hopefully, to get the album streaming in February. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, from December, we're hoping to release the album on CD. Um, so, yeah, and then we'll see what next year brings moving forwards after the album's released. Um, probably the second album. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But, uh, we shall we shall see. Yeah, I'm I'm lucky down, not ignoring. I'm looking at what Janice has sent me just in case I missed something. I think you told us everything. You must yeah, debut album C D. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. Just in case there's something on that I'd miss. Uh oh Janice, can you play in the track again at the end? Yes, of course I can play it back at the end if you want it on the end of the show. Of course we can. We can do that. Not a problem. It, it, it'd be wrong. It maybe it'd be wrong or it may be right. I've no idea, but we'll play it. See what I did there. Fucking, I'm fucking genius, ah. Huh? I'm absolutely fucking genius. Hey, this is a good question because this comes up quite a lot, and you don't have to answer it. You don't have to answer it. Um, which band or bands would you put in room one or one, never to be seen ever again? Uh, you two. <laughs> you two. Any particular reason? Just fucking uh, obnoxious uh, bastards, or or just you know what I mean? Uh, You'd be politically just, correct. Just not my cup of tea. Great songs, just not my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. Uh, I mean, their story's interesting, isn't it? They think they're going to come into fame because it's like a lot of people when they see famous bands or individuals, whether they're entrepreneurs or whatever, and they go, "Oh, it's all right for them." I mean, they were just about to pack up. I believe, hopefully, it's true. They were sleeping in the back of the tranny van. And I think they were just about to say, stuff it, and they got discovered. I don't know if that's true or not, but that, I think they did. Um, oh, Eddie's going to play it tomorrow. You might not be allowed to play it tomorrow, Eddie, because it's an exclusive, so you might have to I've asked him. Can, oh, he says, oh, can I play it tomorrow? Um, yeah, on his 100th breakfast show. So Eddie's going to yeah. want yeah, yeah, you can play it. Yeah, Eddie. absolutely. Yeah, you've, yeah, had, yeah, you've yeah. got permission, man. Well, Janice will send it to you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure about O2. O2, uh, O2, you two. Mate of mine, back in the day, and I'm giving me age away now, um, he was Irish, funnily enough, and he's like, I'm listening to this band, are they going to be mega? And I listened to it, and I said, oh, yeah, they're quite good. He went, these are going to be absolutely mega. You know, like big. And they were. Yeah. So he's quite right, wasn't he? So, yeah. There's a few bands I don't like that everybody else back likes and go raves over them and artists and I go, just don't like them. Do you know what I mean? We've, we've all got to be different, haven't we? We've all got to be different. Yeah. What do, yeah. What do, you, what do you flick on when you... Because I, I, I'm doing an, I do an indie show. I love reggae. And this is the bizarre. So I've mentioned two forms of music. So if I'm going to go away and do something, I'll put liquid drum and bass on. Insane, I know. But that's what I put on when I'm 
want to go and do something. What what do you flick on? Bit of ABBA or uh, you know Spice Girls or something? What do you? What do you uh, <laughs> No, where, what do you mean when I'm relaxing? Or, yeah, you're relaxing, because yeah. you, you're obviously into India. I mean, some people might just put India on, but I, I think a lot of people are into something and go, do you know what? That's what I like to listen to. Not all the time, but I don't know, might be driving or doing something in the garden. I'm going to put that on. What would you slap on? You it, it's um, an Audi, so the, the sort of piano-type music. Right. Um just, just something a bit more relaxing, especially mm. if you're trying to concentrate. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, basically any any sort of instrument, instrumental based music nice. usually. If yeah. I'm trying to trying to relax, I get that. Um, yeah, that doesn't makes matter sense. What, don't matter what genre it could be, jazz, you know, or, <sighs> uh, et cetera. <laughs> but, <laughs> fucking hate jazz and fucking opera. Fucking but, hate both of them. But I think the the main thing is for me. Um, like you said, Kirk, is, is keeping yourself open and listening to different stuff, you know, because that's that's where something I hear might then inspire me to do something slightly different. Yeah, you you bang on, and also I listen to loads of different stuff. And like I just said, you, I don't listen to jazz and opera; I can't stand them. But <laughs> I'm, I'm open to virtually anything else. And I think sometimes you listen, oh, that's good, and and I think it opens your mind to different things, doesn't it? Uh, different ways of thinking and then i'll go away because of what we do as a station look at what other people are doing i don't know on instagram or tiktok and it might be something that's not related to the station and go actually if you tweak that a little bit that makes sense here even though it's for there you so you're good to listen to it because you might you might listen to something and that probably influence you know that that jazz or that uh instrumental that you pick up will influence probably one of your tracks without you even knowing knowing about it sub you know subconsciously so it's yeah. good it's good not to be stuck i mean you get some people don't you i only listen to this and that's all listen listen to rock from 1977 june to july that's all i want to listen to because after that it was crap idiots <laughs> idiots <laughs> i'm in them moods as well sometimes yeah though, i know but not all the time oh there's never no oh uh, this is a good yeah. winch for everyone oh there's no music after the 70s it's all crap <laughs> you absolute gonk that's all i'll say and there's nothing now it's all crap well try and listen to something else you balloon yeah there you go sorry i, I go on rants every now and then i can't help it can't help it it's a very serious show this very serious show <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to think if we've got anything else. Uh, what else have we got to ask you? Is there anything I've not asked you that you want to get off your chest or talk about? Or I don't know. No, I just want to say thanks, Kirk. And uh, thanks for playing all the previous singles as well. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, hopefully uh, uh, the last single, as I say, for Wrong All Right. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping it's it's doing well. We've, we've got a, I've put out a bit of a like a promo video for Wrong or Right, just to right. uh, give you Tease some behind people. behind the scenes footage of what we were doing at Rockfield oh, in Wales. It's on Twitter. Uh, it's currently on TikTok and YouTube. Right, and, okay. um, and then I'll, I'm, I'm going to uh, promote it on Instagram and that a yeah. little later. But um, yeah, it's it's just a forty second promo, but it, it just gives you some bit behind the scenes. I like uh, it. footage and uh, filming of, uh, of Rockfield, and you can see the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody piano on there as well. Oh, oh so right, we've subscribed. Oh no, I can't subscribe. Told you, didn't it? I'm I'm not all logged in yet. Right, let's go back to that. I think I've got patchwork dots here. What's the rationale with all the upper upper, upper and lower cases in the name? Just again, just to be different. Uh, kind of, yeah. It was just to kind of upset myself more than anybody um <laughs> just 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 uh basically as i've been brought up you, you taught in a certain way to write in a certain way and then you, you get you get taught a different way when you start different jobs and all this sort of thing and uh yeah basically i i just wanted to create something different again kirk and probably upset a few people but maybe that might get them listening <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, don't get me started on that. I just because I'm dyslexic, you see, and and I found out when I was forty four, dyslexic. So I jacked my job in and went to university and did a master's degree because that's what you do, don't you? If you're dyslexic, go and do a degree where you got to do loads yeah. of writing. And um, 
it just infuriates me when I see people and you type something on social media and go, oh, you've you've put the wrong word in, or you must be thick because you've spelt it wrong. And I'm like, yeah, you're a complete knob. It's got nothing to do with that. So I like it, mate. I, and I, I go do public speaking and wear crazy T-shirts, like shirt and tie that are printed. And uh, I'd say to people, you'll not remember my name, but you remember my shirt, won't you? Do you know what I mean? It's like to stand out and be different and people... They'll recognise it. So that's pretty cool. I found I found the official promo video off your YouTube channel. So um, yep. I think what we might do, and then we'll come back, then we'll let you go, and then we'll play the track again. I think we're going to cue the VT, as Janice normally says, and we're going to we're going to share that with the with the people, and we can see a bit behind the scenes of what you've done for your new track. There you go. So cue the VT, as he says. <laughs> There you go, people. That's uh, a very short promo, 40 seconds, sub one minute, so it goes down well on social media. Lovely, mate. Love it. It's great. And that's, uh, that was me stood out outside. That's the Oasis Wonderwall as well. Oh, what do you mean? Oasis Wonderwall. Is that what? Well, the, the, in the promo where I'm stood in front of the wall with a cup of coffee, that's that's the, the Wonderwall that Noel recorded Wonderwall on. Really? Yeah, so Rockfield is where Queen was, but that the the studio like literally next door to where Queen recorded is where Oasis recorded. Oh wow, loving it! That's they awesome. weren't there. They weren't there when I went down there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but you know, in another few years, they'll be saying this is where Patchwork do, pa Patchwork Dots played on this very piano. It's their piano. Yeah. But they had uh, also sort of super grass, super furry animals. You know, I, you know, everybody's recorded there. Black Sabbath. Oh, yeah. Eddie's saying it might be where the Beatles recorded, though, as well. So I don't know idea. Uh, yeah, there you go. Well, they've, 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 they've recorded everywhere, the Beatles, didn't they? Abbey Road, obviously. But yeah, it's good. Absolutely cool, man. Right, well, what I'm going to let you do is going to let you get on with your evening, your day or whatever, and we're going to play out with your track and let everyone enjoy it. It's been a pleasure talking to you, mate. It really has. Yeah, that's been brilliant. Thank you, Kurt. Yeah, you're welcome. And thanks, to, thanks to Janice as well. Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> Seriously, the show, uh, sorry, me shows, uh, me Dougie's a Tommy Dustbin, and these interviews would not happen without the awesome Janice and the work she does behind the scenes. She's an absolute angel and she's propelled me to a different place. So my friend, when you try and do everything in your own, no, you need people like Janice, people like Eddie, people, you know, all the other presenters and people that do stuff for us um, because it helps you think a different way. And on those days when you want to give up, the nudging you or texting you going, can you do a promo for that? Don't forget you got a show tonight. Da, 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 and it just keeps you going. So seriously, don't do it on your own, mate. Get some people around you. and uh, But just OCD them to death and you'll be all right. Yeah, will do. <laughs> right, I'm going to let you go. You've been an absolute star, mate. Keep on doing what you're doing. Come back again. Yeah, let us know what you're doing. Yep, right. um, more than happy for you to do little videos and send them to Janice. Like, oh, I'm outside where I'm... Well, I'm, and you won't be doing it. Oh, I'm here now. This is where Nirvana did the, this. Oh, what's the pool one? That's Nirvana, isn't it? I'm just going to go and dive in the pool because that's from the... And recreate that. Do you know what I mean? Anything like that, send it to us. And it's all great content for our for our show if you want to do that. Any time. Just send us any daft stuff like that. We're not bothered. Well, we well love do. It. thanks, Kurt. Thanks, man. You take care. Well, that was another introducing people. Wasn't he good? Wasn't he great? Great to chat to him. Thanks very much. Thanks, John, for setting it up. And uh, we're going to play his track now. And you can enjoy it. And that's another introducing done. Yeah. Let's get on with it. Let's play his track.
is Kirkpickstone. 